Hello, my amazing kindergarten artists. I hope you had a spectacular spring break and are well rested and ready for some more art, my friends. This week, we are going to be starting our last project of third quarter, or technically our first project for fourth quarter, my friends. And that is a landscape, my friends. And we're gonna learn all about what landscapes are, and we're actually gonna create just a little bit different example than what I have here. Normally, I would use texture in the art room for this project, but this year I want to use different patterns to help make our landscape unique and interesting, my friends. So let's go take a look at what art materials we need to start our landscape and learn about what a landscape is together. Now, before we begin, my friends, I do want to make a quick clarification. On your art schedule, it says to use a black marker. Now, if you do want to paint your background of your landscape using your watercolor paints, please do not use a washable marker. Instead, I highly recommend today, my friends, using either a black crayon or if it's okay with your parents or any adult that is watching you, please use a black Sharpie, okay? Again, no washable markers today. So now that we've got that started, my friends, there should only be one last piece of white paper in your folder. And that is what we are going to be doing our landscape on today, my friends. Now the question of the day is, what is a landscape? If you look at my example that I showed you earlier, you'll notice some parts of a landscape. For instance, you can see dirt, rock, grass, hills, sky, sun, clouds, trees, even mountains. But there are many other things that can come in a landscape. So what is it? It is a natural scene. For instance, if you were to go out into a field and just look around, my friends, that would be considered looking at land that could be in a landscape. Now again, there's other things that can be in landscapes and there are other things such as seascapes as well that include the sea or the ocean. So when it comes to landscapes, my friends, what you often don't see is anything man or human made. For instance, in my picture, there are no houses, there's no people, and there's no other buildings or signs of humans that helps make it more of a landscape. Now, you can include some of those details, but today I wanna to focus on drawing just a few aspects together. And as always, my friends, your artwork never has to look exactly like mine. I'm going to draw a landscape that looks like this. But again, you could add different details. For example, maybe instead of adding two hills, what if you added some water instead? Or what if you only put one mountain in your background? Those types of things are gonna be left up to you, my friends, but we do have to fill in our entire piece of paper. So here's how I like to start. At the bottom of my paper, I like to start with a very, very gently wiggling line. This is where my dirt's going to be. On top of my dirt, I like to add some nice large round rocks. Again, rocks are something that we can see in a landscape because they are often found outside. I know sometimes we also might find rocks inside, such as in a museum or in a collection. Next, I like to add some grass above my rocks. And I don't want just a flat line of grass because that's kind of boring. I wanna kind of use my zigzag line to create some different lengths of grass, because maybe there's some long grass and some short grass, and maybe there's a few little points of crab grass all the way along my paper. After that, I like to add a couple of hills. Maybe I'll draw one small round hill, and maybe I'll add one larger round hill. Again, hills are nice and round, as opposed to mountains, which come to a point. Now again, you don't have to do two hills. You could do maybe just one and then add some water waves. Or you could use your wiggly line again to show kind of a gentle river instead. 
Now, one thing I do want to see is at least one tree on your artwork, my friend. So I'm going to use my eraser real quickly just to erase a little bit of the top part of my short hill because right there, we're going to start with a tree trunk and I'm going to use the number 11. Notice how I'm making the ones in my 11 nice and tall. I also want to think about the bottom and the top of my tree. For instance, a tree is connected to the land with some roots. So again, I might use that zigzag line to go out and in and out and in and create some nice pointed roots for my tree to help keep it standing tall. At the top of my tree, I could either add branches by bringing out some straight lines, or maybe it's during spring and summertime when the trees are starting to get full, and I could use my bouncing line to create a nice full looking tree top. This is the same kind of line that I like using when I draw my clouds as well. So, so far I've got rocks, dirt, grass, hills, and a tree. Now it's time to focus on some larger things to fill up my background. For instance, like I said, I enjoy putting some mountains. So I'll start close to the edge and top of my paper, maybe bring a point up here. And as I come back down, I'll add a few smaller points before I touch another line. And at the tops of some mountains, my friends, I know it can be very, very cold. So I might use my zigzag line just to show that at the top of this mountain, there is some snow and ice. Now again, I don't have to add a second mountain if I don't want to. Personally, I actually like enjoying and adding maybe one more mountain over on this side. Again, maybe I'll add a little bit of ice. But the last thing we need to think about, my friends, is the sky, because the sky is always a part of a landscape. You always want to be looking out and see not only land and the features of the land, such as hills, mountains, and grass and rocks, but also what is happening in the sky. Maybe it's nighttime and you add a moon and some stars. Or maybe it's daytime and you could add a nice bright sun, maybe a few clouds, or maybe it's even getting close to sunset. Maybe my sun is starting to get low in the sky it's still shining though, so maybe I'll add even some lines around it to show that it's nice and bright and sunshiny. And then again, maybe I could even add a few little fluffy clouds here or there to really help you see that this is outside. And here is my landscape. Again, friends, you don't have to draw all of the same things that I did. But please make sure that you start at the bottom of your paper and work your way up to the very top and have at least four or more parts of a scene. For instance, dirt can count as one, rocks is two, grass is three, hills is four, five is a tree, six is mountains, and seven is a sky. Look at that, I have seven things on mine. So you could even add more. There's other things you could add as well, my friends. Like I said, maybe we don't see any humans, but are there animals in a landscape? Of course. For instance, I could add birds in the sky, or maybe there's a cute little chipmunk running across this little hill. Maybe if I do have some water over here, there might be a little fish swimming upstream. I will leave those parts to you. But there is one last step today, my friends. After you're all done drawing with your pencil, remember we always wanna try and trace up our lines with something dark. Again, please do not use something like a washable marker today. Because like I said, if you wanna be able to paint next art class, you need either a black crayon or a black Sharpie for this step. I'm gonna go ahead, my friends, I'm gonna use my Sharpie today. I'm gonna to trace up all my lines nice and quickly. But as always, if you need to pause the video here and catch up, please do. Here's how my landscape turned out today. Remember my friends, yours should always look different than mine because you are a different artist. Now the reason I turned my camera back around kindergarten friends is because starting next week, for those friends that are coming to school four days a week, art will no longer be virtual. We will be in the art room learning together my friends. So this is really very important. Instead of having homework this week, my friends, I need you to make sure that this drawing gets put back into your third quarter art folder and 
if you notice at the bottom of my art folder, I have written my name. Because these art folders, my friends, need to come to school starting next week. We're gonna finish up our landscapes and then we'll get new fourth quarter art folders as well. Now, besides that, I'm going to show you in a picture next, my friends, all the other art materials that I need you to bring back to school. So that is your homework this week, my friends, getting that stuff ready, including your art folder and making sure your drawing is in there to have those items head back to school so that way we can finish them together. For now though, I'll say goodbye. Please make sure you look at that photo of all those art materials that you need to bring, please.